Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. International Latino star Bad Bunny has left the Alamo Dome. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what this means for the city's economy. The latest on the war in Ukraine. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien in Washington. Why Ukrainian President Zelensky says his troops are gaining ground. Coming up. And no rain in this shot, but taking a look outside with live cam, it's 75 degrees, a little humid. We'll be checking in with Mike very soon. We had some big storms in the area last night. We'll talk to Mike in a second. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 8th. Did you get some rain? Yes, it was amazing. What about you guys? Uh, absolutely. Lightning, thunder, the whole deal last night. Yeah, us too. Uh, well, actually, I got some in the afternoon as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. That's what happened to a lot of folks, and I think it moved right through the heart of the city. Mike is it here did. with more. Yeah, and I, I had to run some errands yesterday afternoon, and boy, I couldn't have timed it any better because mm -hmm. all of a sudden went inside, and oh, the wind and everything, and it's coming down, and yeah, moved through fairly quickly, but dumped a whole bunch of rain. Thank goodness that thing didn't just sit in one spot. That would have caused problems. But uh, yeah, it was some beautiful rain, six hundredths of an inch though, officially out there at the airport. So that's kind of how how tiny it was, and how precise it was as far as uh, dropping rain. We're looking over there by uh, 410 I-10 right now. Still a couple of clouds left over this morning and we've got uh, temperatures that are well, about what you would expect. Uh, a little bit above that here in town. 75 degrees, low 70s, 60s in parts of the hill country. Humidity is okay. Pollen mold is on the moderate side. Pigweed grass are both low and this morning we will uh, have temperatures maybe drop down a few more degrees. 74 partly cloudy skies and then later on this afternoon it is going to be a hot one. 95. We did it 96 yesterday and that humidity boy right before those storms moved on through here. It was it was pretty tough and a shower or two is still possible. We had those storms move from north to south and we still have a couple little glitches in the atmosphere. It's going to be fewer and further between later on today, but you may uh, who knows if you didn't get rain yesterday, you get a little bit today. Wouldn't count on it too awfully much, but uh, just a mention of it. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of moments. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. It's the concert. Just about everybody has been talking about international Latino artist Bad Bunny taking over the Alamo City last night, and the excitement is just now finally winding down. The Alamo Dome was packed with about 60,000 people, and our Camelia Juarez joins us there live with how things are looking now. And Camelia, we hear it was a big night. Yeah, it was a big night, and I know me and you are just going to sleep, but Bad Bunny fans are, well, Bad Bunny fans are just now going to sleep. We're getting ready for our day. They're going to sleep. In fact, just before the live shot, I saw a couple people walking behind here wearing their Bad Bunny gear, so fans are still leaving the Alamo Dome, and Bad Bunny didn't leave right away. He actually made a pit stop at the club 1902 right before, and that's that's not surprising. In fact, Benito drew a large crowd since he, and a huge international crowd. People traveling from all over to listen to his hits from his latest album, Un Verano Sin Ti. Officials with the Alamo Dome say it's one of their bigger shows that they've seen, comparable to a UTSA game, but this is different because I mean, these are international people. So they're calling for this a win as they recover from the pandemic. But not only is this a win for the Alamo Dome, but this is a huge economic driver for the city as those tourists that are going to wake up and start their day and hopefully stick around for the rest of the day. Steph Stephanie, Mark. Thanks, Camelia. Now, drugs, guns, and cash. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says they made the bust at a southwest side home on Burl Cove last month. Now, they revealed two people were arrested, including a woman accused of throwing bags of drugs over a fence. Now, deputies say they saw 28-year-old Sahara Martin trying to run from the back of the home, but they caught up with her. Meanwhile, inside the home, they arrested 45-year-old Jody Martinez, who deputies say is an active gang member. In the morning headlines, police in Memphis, Tennessee have arrested a man they say drove around the city shooting at people killing Ford. Happened during an hours long rampage that forced people to shelter in place last night. Police said he recorded his actions on Facebook. A police spokeswoman said 19 year old Ezekiel Kelly was taken into custody just after nine last night when he crashed during a high speed chase. Memphis police officers say three others were wounded in seven shootings across the Memphis metro area. Officers did not discuss a motive or release the identities of those killed or wounded.
California has avoided rolling outages during extreme heat for now. The California Independent System operator is thanking residents and businesses for heeding another request to reduce electricity consumption during peak evening hours. Western states are struggling through one of the hottest and longest September heat waves on record. Temperatures began soaring last week and the National Weather Service warned that dangerous heat could continue through Friday. A Las Vegas area elected public official has been arrested as a suspect in the fatal stabbing of a veteran newspaper reporter. Clark County Public Administrator Robert Rob Tellis was taken into custody at his home by police SWAT officers. It happened hours after investigators served a search warrant and confiscated vehicles on the probe of the killing of Las Vegas Review Journal reporter Jeff German. Tellis had been a focus of German's reporting about turmoil in the county office that handles property of people who die without a will or family contacts. This morning, Ukrainian forces are widening their counteroffensive against Russian troops in the country's south and east. This, as the U.S. reports, it has intelligence that Russia is looking to buy more ammunition from North Korea. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest from Washington. This morning, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky telling his people there is good news in Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian troops in the country's east, saying the Ukrainian flag is returning over settlements there. The Ukrainian army posting this video, which it says shows the moment troops liberated a village, taking down a Soviet-era red flag. This as the U.S. is shedding light on the true number of Gimler rockets it's sent to Ukraine, saying it's delivered thousands of these rockets to be used in long-range HIMAR military systems, which target Russian troops from a distance. The White House now asking Congress for an additional $13 billion to help Ukraine in its fight. But the Pentagon confirms it's also seeing signs that Russia is looking to stock up on arms reaching out to North Korea to purchase what U.S. officials warn could be millions of rounds of ammunition. So the fact that they're reaching out to North Korea uh, is a sign that, uh, that they're having some challenges on the sustainment front. And grave concerns remain over the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest of its kind in Europe. These new images revealing more damage from shelling at the plant President Zelensky telling ABC World News anchor David Muir Russia is using the plant essentially as a nuclear weapon. It means six Chernobyls. It means the biggest danger in the world. So they occupied it. So that is, means that they use nuclear weapon. That is nuclear weapon. Earlier this week, U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres called on both Russia and Ukraine to stop any military activity around the Zaporizhia plant, warning any more damage could result in a, quote, catastrophe. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 438, 75 degrees. Dallas Cowboys get ready to host Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this weekend. Why the Cowboys will be the underdogs in their own home. It is opening weekend. Outside right now with the traffic authority, seeing how things are looking on the highways and byways of the Alamo City, I-37 at Houston Street, very, very light traffic. Let's look outside with live cam. A lot of rain moving through the area yesterday. Not so much right now, uh, but we do have a chance of a couple of showers. We're gonna be checking in with Mike. To tell us all about it. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. 441, welcome back. When the Cowboys host the Bucks this weekend, Cowboys would be one and a half point underdogs at home. The reason why, probably because of what happened last year when the Cowboys gave the seven time Super Bowl champion a minute 24 seconds to win their tight game. You can argue this showdown on Sunday night football is between the two best quarterbacks in the league, and when you take a look at this stat, it backs it up. Only two NFL quarterbacks have averaged more than 300 yards passing per game since 2020 with a minimum of 20 starts. That's Tom Brady at number one at 301 and Dak Prescott at number two with 300. Uh, point two, very close. Micah Parsons, who is looking to add to his 13 sacks from last year, was asked if Brady has kryptonite. I mean, I really haven't seen it since I've been alive. You know, he's been pretty dominant, uh, you know. But at the end of the day, I think uh, just like any superhero, they have challenges uh, and they got to get through them, whether they lose in that day or they lose a fight. I done seen Hawk get beat up. I done seen Thor get beat up. Seen Captain America get beat up. I mean, every superhero gets beat up. 
But, you know, one thing they always do, they always get it back up and they find a way to get to their destination. So Tom may have a kryptonite, he may not, but he gets, gets beat up, but he gets back up. Michael Gallup did practice yesterday and is looking to return sooner than later. If one thing the UTSA Roadrunners proved in their season opening loss to the Houston Cougars, they can hang with some of the best in college football. Now this week they travel to West Point to take on Army as two-point favorites. One of the things head coach Jeff Trailer pointed out is the loss of four offensive tackles and having to make major adjustments. Our plans for the whole night were to help on the left side. And when you get in the middle of the game and you have to now start helping on both sides, that's a whole other protection that we tried to drop on the sideline. And you could tell by some of the results, we didn't do a real good job. And that, I'm really mad at myself. We understand what happened last week and we just try to lead that in the past. You know what I mean? Like nothing that we do now can change what the outcome that happened last week. So it's best to just move on and try to change the stuff that we could change in the future. Control what we control. Kickoff Saturday between UTSA and Army as at 11 a.m. This is six ranked fight in Texas Aggies host Appalachian State will be the toughest test for the Aggies defense. That's because the Mountaineers nearly pulled off the comeback of the year in their season opener against North Carolina. But the Aggies coming off a shutout season opening victory against Sam Houston. The defense we preach and preach on we are family. So we got each other back and Coach Durkin does a good job of making sure that we don't forget that we are a brotherhood at all. His schemes and things help us be in the right place at the right time. So with that being said, uh, I do think it's definitely a song tether for a great start on the season. Kick off Kyle Field Saturday set for 2.30 p.m. And while college football is king on Saturday this time year, don't forget Saturday is also Mark's Manu Ginobili's induction into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. It'll be the fourth Spurs player to enjoy that honor. Our live coverage from Springfield begins later today at 5 p.m. Look for that. Yes, we will. Time now, 444 and 75 degrees for now. A 10-year-old boy had to have his part of his leg amputated after a shark attack in Florida. Hear how he says he survived the nearly fatal encounter. And welcome back. It is 447. A 10 year old boy is describing how he survived a near fatal shark attack while snorkeling off the Florida Keys. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive surviving a shark attack. He was just screaming and um, waving his arms, and I needed to just, start. I didn't see anything in the water. I just saw him. They're screaming at me to get to him. 11 year old Jameson Reader Jr. was snorkeling with a pool noodle when the unimaginable happened. He was viciously attacked by a bull shark in the Florida Keys. Part of his leg amputated. It's just, you know, a reminder of how short life is and how fragile life is. And this morning, his family telling their story exclusively to GMA. I'm happy to be alive and that nine foot bull shark should have have taken me down. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this harrowing survival story. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide. Pretty quiet out there at I-37 in Houston, but things are moving. Mike Ostray joined us now. Mike, quick story. I went to HEB yesterday afternoon. I saw the storms coming in. Mm -hmm. I turned to my son and I said, should we take the umbrella in? He goes, nah, you're good. <laughs> so, did you listen to him? I did. Oh. I did. So we go outside and he said, oh, I'll get the truck. Uh, I'll get the truck. So, so my sign. question is, that why didn't you just stay in the store? Uh, it wasn't raining that hard. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. There was some lightning, but it was a quick run back to the truck. So no, no problem. But I just thought that was kind of funny. It he said, he said, he said, why did you listen to me? Oh, he did? <laughs> Yeah. And then yeah. had you not, he would have said, Dad, you never listened to me. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, hopefully you weren't caught without an umbrella or you were inside because those storms in some areas, uh, boy, they were really packing a punch. Now, uh, about a half an inch of rain, and that probably came all in one fell swoop right there, just east of the airport, which is interesting. So right east of the airport, half inch at the airport. 
six hundredths of an inch of rain. So that's how kind of localized, if you will, the heavier downpours were. We've got a fairly nice start this morning. Couple of clouds hanging around here. Here's what it looks like as far as rainfall when those storms moved on through. A uh, nice big swath from about Austin almost down to the southwest somewhat. And we had an uh, inch, inch and a half, almost a two inch rainfall amounts in some of the, the heavier spots. A lot of rain fell around Medina Lake, which is obviously very good news on the west side of Bear County, just about an inch and a half right to the uh, south of Lotus there and northern uh, Atascosa County, inch and a half of rain and then closer into town. Again, here's that uh, kind of half inch amount. There's the airport didn't really pick up much of anything and then down around by uh, Lackland, almost two thirds of an inch of rain. Then some of the lesser amounts, only one one hundredth right there. So yeah, there were a couple of just really hard and heavy right here in downtown as well. I mean, it was coming down in buckets at times. Now, this afternoon, we still have the chance for one or two of those showers to pop up around here. I think they're going to be fewer and further between than what they were yesterday. This morning, we will have, I'm just going to say partly cloudy skies, a couple of spots where we may have a few more clouds. Mid 70s will stay fairly steady for the next couple of hours and then warm up very quickly. Already up to 87 degrees today at noon. Like I said, yesterday we did hit 96 right before that uh, those storms moved on through. They started brewing right about noontime and moved on down to the south. Going for 95 today, and there's that 10% chance for a stray shower or two to uh, pop up. So yesterday, of course, the storms were coming in from north to south, and we still had that same flow in the atmosphere. And again, computer models, one or two of these uh, showers popping up around here. I think there'll be fewer and further between than what they were yesterday. Now, this particular model has kind of a cell developing there in uh, Atascosa County. We'll keep an eye on that. This model was doing pretty good yesterday as far as where some of the rain was going to be. So um, don't forget your umbrella. Don't listen to Mark's son. Take your umbrella just to be on the safe side later on. Sorry, don't mean to call him out. Uh, just to be on the safe side later on today. Now, as far as it's not going to be one of those uh, everybody gets rain type situations. So obviously the odds are in your favor if you don't take your umbrella today. 87 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon. And then high temperature is going to make it up to 95. About three above normal, mostly sunny. One or two of those showers out there later on today. Very few and far between. And then... Pretty much take rain out of the picture and we are going to be staying mid 90s all the way through the weekend into next week. Should see slightly drier air move in here, so we may have some more comfortable overnight low temperatures getting closer down to about 70 by uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday and a little bit drier in the afternoons. We're not going to have quite as much humidity because humidity is going to be sticking around somewhat later on today. Is today the grand finale for the storms? Oh, I know. It was yeah. so nice yesterday. Yeah, boy, that thing. Yeah, it was really moving. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 452, 75 degrees. And fans of Disney and Pixar's Cars have something new to watch, what the returning actors are saying about the new series. Five Till, a new car series debuts on Disney Plus, and a legal drama gets its final season. Really, it's what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Oh, hello world. It's the beginning of the end for The Good Fight. The Good Wife spinoff starts its sixth and final season today. Star Christine Baranski telling me that working on the legal drama, which consistently satirized American politics, starting with Donald Trump's presidential win, was amazing. I'm very proud of the work. I think, I think it will go down as the best show of our times in terms of reflecting what was going on in these crazy six years. The first episode of the final season of The Good Fight is out today on Paramount+. Plus. Hey, Mater, want to race? Uh, well, come on. Also out today, it's time to go on a road trip with your favorite Pixar cars. Cars on the Road is a bunch of mini episodes starring Mater and Lightning McQueen. Larry the Cable Guy voices everybody's favorite tow truck, telling me there's nothing better than a good road trip. Just being with people you like, being people with people you love, and just... Uh, just exploring the rest of the country. Cars on the Road makes its debut today on Disney+. Plus. It's mother versus daughter for the first time this season on Dancing with the Stars. TikTok star Charlie D'Amelio and her mom Heidi will compete against each other in the ballroom. The new season of Dancing with the Stars debuts September 19th on its new home, Disney+. Plus. Disney, by the way, the parent company of ABC News. And happy birthday, Pink! The superstar singer is 43 today, while Stranger Things star Gaten Matarazzo is 20. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
457, 75 degrees. And former Trump advisor Steve Bannon expected to turn himself in today. The new charges he faces in connection with former President Trump's border wall. And we're checking out Apple's new iPhone 14 and the fancy features it comes with. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuy looking there at a very quiet I-37 at Houston. How we're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos about all those other roadways very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. New details on the woman arrested for attempted kidnapping coming up on GMSA. We'll tell you what we know. And a former Trump advisor is expected to surrender to authorities in New York today Why he's facing charges connected to former President Trump's border wall. Outside with live cam this morning, we had storms, big storms in the area yesterday afternoon. Could we squeeze out one more chance of widely scattered storms? We'll talk to Mike in just a sec. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, September the 8th. That's right. We made it to Thursday. It was actually a pretty quick week for a lot of us here. <laughs> and we enjoyed that rain. Wasn't it wonderful? It was fantastic. A uh, lot of rain in some spots, uh, but Mike Osterhage is here with more on what's happening right now. You know, and it's funny because it was so localized. Uh, the airport, six hundredths of an inch of rain. And we just showed a picture just east of there, about a half an inch. Some folks saw more more than an inch of rain when those storms moved on through because boy they were packing a punch in some of the winds and there were even some severe storms uh, to the east and southeast of town around uh, Guadalupe Gonzalez Wilson counties late last night 74 right now got some clouds around here I'm going to call it partly maybe most of the cloudy skies at times and that bottom number dew point is at 69 which even when, when you get below 70 it is a little more pleasant out there now it is going to be a hot day we did hit 96 yesterday right before those storms moved on through going to make it up to 95 today that's three of above normal and get used to that because that's going to be the trend over the next at least week. The aquifer dropped down four tenths of a foot and the allergens still got a moderate amount of mold that had dropped down. Pigweed and grass are on the low side. Of course, the updated allergen counts going to be coming out in a couple of hours and dew point temperatures around the area. This is how you factor and, and figure out relative humidity. You want to be below 60. Well, it's close to it in Bandera, 65, 66 Bernie stage. So Ple more pleasant air up there, I should say, in parts of the hill country. Still some humidity around Stinson, Castroville, Port SA, and elsewhere it is tolerable. It's not like a wet towel in the face, kind of anything like that. Nice, nice morning. Uh, some clouds hanging around here, and then we will have mostly sunny skies. Hot, like I said, 95, and then a couple of showers. There is still a small chance for one or two showers, maybe a thunderstorm out there later on today. I think fewer and further between than what we had yesterday. Mostly sunny, hot this weekend, and then hot and mostly sunny. Just had to flip that up to change things a little bit because the weather's not going to change weekend going into next week. There is a weak front which is going to try and move through here. It may trim off some of the uh, humidity. It's a little more pleasant in the afternoon, but still it is going to be almost a summer like weather pattern. Those mid 90s for high temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. Anything going on? It's been a quiet morning so far, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways right now. 281 at Jones Maltzberger there, 281 by the airport. It is a perfect time to take advantage of these quiet roadways. You can see there at 1604 at Kitty Hawk, there's really not been a lot to show you these last few mornings. In fact, the commute has been pretty quiet. We've been off to the quiet start as we get these new days started, but always watch out for those vehicles that are passing through. There's not a lot of them, but still, it's pretty dark out there and you have to make sure that you follow the rules of the road. Let's take you to the map because the situation has been the same. We've spotted a lot of pavement out there on those trans guide cameras and a lot of green on the screen. You can see that, of course, we do have that active construction that is still out there. We'll break that down for you a little bit later on this morning and tell you what spots to be on the lookout for. But right now, if your travels are going to take you into the Alamo City, there's really not a lot that's going to slow you down this early 24. That journey from Bernie on I 10 eastbound looks like a 24 minute drive time and a 26 minute drive time for our friends on 281 southbound heading in from Bolverde and a 26 minute drive time for those heading in I-35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels. So the travel times don't look too bad right now. And of course, traffic looks very quiet. 37 to Carolina, pretty quiet scene after that Bad Bunny concert. But of course, we're going to watch these quiet roads closely and give you those updates on the road closures in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the woman accused of an attempt attempted kidnapping at a far west side Walmart has bonded out of jail and is now on house arrest. We are talking about 35 year old Jessica Vega, who was arrested on Tuesday. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live and good morning, Jonathan. We understand that there is new information regarding Vega. 
Good morning, Stephanie, and that's right. We are learning Vega has a, a number of priors and has even made headlines appearing on national television. This is what we know. We know Vega first made national headlines back in 2012 while living in New York. Now, Vega... Uh, pretending to have had cancer, fooling friends, family, and even her ex-husband in an interview to 2020. Vega admitting that a friend forged letters from a doctor about her supposed cancer treatments. Now, she pretended to have had leukemia, accepting more than $13,000 in donations that even paid for a wedding and a honeymoon in Aruba. We were contacted by her former husband after her arrest to make this connection. We were able to confirm through public records that Jessica Vega is the same woman arrested here in San Antonio who became known as the Cancer Bride. Now, according to an arrest document, Vega attempted kidnapping a four-year-old at a Walmart. That girl was at a Walmart with her mom on Monday at 1604 and Petrenko Road. Now we know Vega is charged with attempted uh, kidnapping. That's a state jail felony. We understand she is in full house arrest, which means she is under round the clock monitoring, 24 seven monitoring. We know she is set to have a pretrial hearing next month. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotton, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And there was a lot of traffic in the downtown area last night. The Bad Bunny concert packed the Alamo Dome with about 60,000 fans. And many business owners are from that huge turnout. Nope. Richard Oliver, the city of San Antonio's communications manager for convention and sports facilities, says many of these fans are international and they are not just coming in for one night and then taking off. They're going to stay and enjoy San Antonio for two or three days. So these fans are spending money on hotels, restaurants, and merchandise. Last night's show at the Dome was expected to bring in a crowd similar to last year's Alamo Bowl. That game generated $45 million for the city. Apartment tenants living in unsanitary conditions and without running water. That's what Councilwoman Melissa cabello Haverta says is happening in our area. And she says more needs to be done to tackle the issue before it gets worse. Right now, the city is looking at some ways to help tenants. One option, adding more compliance officers specifically deal with compliance issues at apartments. Councilwoman cabello Haverta says another problem is that many tenants are afraid to speak up for themselves. They're afraid to get in trouble. They're afraid to get evicted. This is the place that they can afford and they want to continue to work and raise their families there. Um, and if they had their choice, of course, it would be clean and a nice place. Um, and so we have to give them that choice. The Texas Tenants Union hosts free workshops on tenants' rights. We have information on one of those upcoming workshops right now on KSAT.com. Now to a new development overnight in the January 6th investigation. We have now learned a current advisor to former President Trump is now facing scrutiny from the FBI. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the details. This morning, ABC News confirms the FBI recently tried to interview a person currently in former President Trump's inner circle. Sources say William Russell was not home when agents showed up at his house to ask questions related to the January 6th investigation. The 31-year-old was a special assistant to President Trump in the White House. Russell moved to Florida when Trump left office and still serves as one of his aides. <laughs> Meanwhile, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon is expected to surrender to authorities in New York today, where he faces new charges in connection with a group called We Build the Wall, which raised $20 $25 million to build a section of President Trump's border wall, much of that money coming from small donors who were told all of the funds would go toward the wall. In a separate federal indictment, Bannon was accused of using some of the money for personal expenses. Bannon never went to trial. Trump pardoned him before leaving office. But that pardon does not apply to a state indictment. So completely different government sovereign, federal case versus state. So there's no overlap there in terms of his liability. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 509, 74 degrees. And Apple announces four new iPhone models. This is iPhone 14, actually. We're going to tell you about the new features that come with them. And a community south of San Antonio has been without water for weeks. Why it's taking so long to get the water turned back on. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're starting your morning at 74 degrees. And even though there's a very tiny chance of a shower, we're hoping it happens today. We'll be checking in with Mike very soon. 
12 minutes past the hour, no water and no help. People in a small Frio County community say they have been forgotten after spending weeks without water. Derby is about 10 miles southwest of Pearsall and residents there have been without water since August 6th. Now people tell us they've had water issues since July and water delivery stopped coming in at least two weeks ago. Now motions are boiling over as residents are having to buy bottled water just to get by. This is United States, this is America. Nobody help us. We complain all the time and nobody help us. I had to even short my landlord this month $175 because I had to use it for water. I mean, that's a necessity. You don't realize how much you use water until you have no water. And Derby ING is a private company that supplies water to the town. The owner says the drought brought the water level below its pump at Carrizo Springs, and they hope to have a contractor on the site next week. Geta did not have a timeline for when running water would be back. We'll do our best to keep you posted. Now 513, still 74 degrees. And how Apple's new watch is made especially for high endurance athletes. Plus how Verizon's new unlimited plan is benefiting iPhone users. doing on their phones? They're investing with Merrill. Think Miss Allen is texting for backup? No, she's totally in charge of her portfolio and Daniel G. She's building a greener future and he's running a pretend restaurant. And Phil? Phil has questions, but none of them are about his portfolio. Digital tools so impressive, your money never stops working for you with Merrill, a Bank of America company. What would you like the power to do? Nurtec ODT is the only medication that can treat my migraine right when it strikes and prevent my next attack. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. Most common side effects in less than 3% are nausea, indigestion, stomach pain. Treat and prevent all in one. With GoDaddy payments, you can sell anything, anywhere. Get paid online or in person and manage all your sales from one place with the lowest transaction fees. Because if you've got it, we've got you. Start today at GoDaddy.com slash payments. Glad you're back. 517 Apple has debuted four new iPhones and a new watch for endurance athletes. ABC's Rihanna and Allie has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the new iPhones. Apple has unveiled four models, the 14, the 14 Plus, the 14 Pro, and the 14 Pro Max. They include better cameras and a new satellite feature. That means you can call 911 even with no wireless connection. Prices start at 800 bucks. The company also introduced the Apple Watch Ultra. It is the most rugged model yet, built for athletes and extreme outdoor activities. The Ultra has a bigger and brighter screen and twice the water resistance as the older model. It is made of titanium, but it's going to cost you $800. And Verizon is teaming up with Apple to offer the One Unlimited for iPhone plan. It offers Verizon customers cell coverage for their iPhone, plus all Apple One services. Those include Apple Music and Apple TV+. Plus. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. It's 518. You know what mean that, that means? It's time to check in with Steven. Time to check in with the other fresh, <laughs> yeah. fresh haircut in the studio. Yes. <laughs> you know, Mark good. and I go to different spa uh, spots, but uh, every other Wednesday for me, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All Yesterday right. was haircut day. It was haircut day, but it was also a little bit wet out on the roadways. Thankfully, this morning, things look pretty dry out there. 35 at US 90. You could see there really not a lot to show you in terms of the commute, but it is picking up in some of these spots. Tenet Probant is one of those examples where we are seeing a little bit more busy traffic as well as Evans Road. So just watch out if you're driving through 35 as as I mentioned every single day, it's one of the heavily traveled areas in and around the Alamo City as people are making their way into San Antonio from work. But let's go ahead and take you to the map because it's not been really a concerning morning this uh, early. We are just seeing lots of green out there, which does indicate quiet roadways. But we know that there are those active construction spots as well as road closures. Let's tell you about what's taking place here off Loop 1604 over on the northeast side. Now, if you've driven through this, you may have already seen this work taking place this week, barrier work. But according to TxDOT, that will actually wrap up on Saturday, September 10th. This is overnight, so it's from 10 in the evening to 5 in the morning. It's during that time, you will see an alternating lane closure on Loop 1604 eastbound from Nacogdoches Road to I-35. But you know where to find that information. It is on our website at kset.com slash traffic. You can head over there for more information. Just don't forget, scroll to the bottom of the screen and you'll find a full list of closures there, guys. Thank you, Stephen. We're hoping for an encore today. Yeah, that would be nice to get 
some more rain. We don't want to be greedy or, greedy or anything, but it would be nice. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, be greedy. <laughs> yeah, be greedy. We're more than a foot behind for the year. We well, can that's true. Want more rain. There will be a couple <laughs> of showers around uh, later on this afternoon. I don't think as as widespread as what it was yesterday. And yeah, if you're on the uh, right the correct side of these big storm clouds that were developing, nice, beautiful, billowy white clouds. But then underneath them, look at how dark those skies were. Boy, it was getting almost kind of scary when those storms moved on through yesterday. Right now, just a couple of clouds hanging around here. It's fairly fairly tranquil morning, if you will. The humidity is not bad. We've got temperatures in the mid 70s, 75 at Stinson 74 at the airport. Normal low at the airport is 72 degrees, so a little bit closer around, uh, say, Kelly as well as Randolph. And throughout the rest of today, we'll hold pretty steady. A couple of clouds out there, maybe a few more here and there. And then more sunshine by mid to late morning, 87 at noon. And high temperature today is going to make it up to 95. We did hit 96 right before those storms moved on through here and that 10% chance for a couple of showers, say a couple of thunderstorms to move on through. Here's the satellite and radar loop over the past 12 hours and you can see those big, big storms that slid on through here. At least, like I said, they were moving along fairly quickly. Yes, we do need rain, but we don't need it all at once. And it was coming down in buckets at times. I mean, just flowing down the street and then moved on through and actually cleared out quite nicely. Now we still have this flow coming in here out of the north. So what that means is we'll still have a couple little disturbances that are going to be sliding on in here. And so that's why we do have the chance for some rain. This is what the computer model is indicating right now. One or two of those uh, showers kind of popping up around the area. And again, could have a couple of uh, thunderstorms, a couple of decent downpours associated with that. Most of those will be dying off once we get into the evening hours. Now, what's interesting is... And I can't completely discount this because just kind of looking back to yesterday, this same computer model had a similar situation with yesterday, had the, the chance of rain around here yesterday and then the, the slight chance today. Now, today it's got the chance of rain and a couple of uh, sprinkly showers around tomorrow evening. So uh, just a mention of it as far as uh, perhaps a couple of more showers scattered about tomorrow evening. Quick check of the tropics. Danielle is now just a tropical storm, just even off of this map right there. And this is, of course, Hurricane Earl heading in toward Bermuda. It is still forecast to uh, become a, a major hurricane, at least a category three in the next couple of days. But that's going to just continue off into the Atlantic Ocean. And another couple of waves out here. That one, Hurricane Center, says it's uh, within the next 48 hours. Fairly decent shot of developing into something. But again, Nothing that's going to be affecting us. 87 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon. High temperature makes it up to 95. A couple of showers out there, maybe a thunderstorm, just one or two of them. I don't have anything on the, the graphic here as far as tomorrow evening. Um, it's going to be few and far between, if anything. One thing for sure, though, we're all going to be on the hot side, mid-90s all the way through the weekend into next week. So other than one or two stray little storms, it's almost like a... Well, it's almost like a July weather pattern with a lot of sunshine and a lot of heat and obviously not triple digits and slightly lower humidity should start to move in here by first of next week. July like that's not yeah. a good sign. No, but you said a normal July, not this past oh, July with okay. okay. triple right. digits. That, that right. just, you know, every single day kind of <laughs> okay. the same type right. of situation. Because that searing heat is still fresh for a lot yes. of us. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. OK, zoom in over here. 523, 74 <laughs> degrees. Coming up next, Top Gun Maverick is still flying. Hi, are going to tell you what movie it has surpassed now as Kelly Clarkson gets a big honor. The latest Tom Cruise movie obliterates yet another record. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. Top Gun Maverick keeps soaring higher. The long-awaited sequel has topped $701 million in domestic ticket sales, pushing the pick past Black Panther for the number five spot on the all-time domestic box office chart. Everything will be impacted. Food, medicine, electricity. Leading to mass panic and violence. You think this is deliberate? Global power and communication begin to fail as the world's oil stops working correctly in last light. Matthew Fox and Downton Abbey's Joanne Froggatt star in the limited series based on Alex Garrow's best-selling thriller, which debuts today on Peacock. 
The original American Idol is headed to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Kelly Clarkson is set to be honored with a star on Hollywood Boulevard on Monday, September 19th. The Grammy-winning artist and Emmy-winning talk show host will be inducted in the recording category. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 74 degrees. The second suspect in a Canadian stabbing spree is dead. Why police say we may never know the true motive behind the killings of 10 people. Plus why pet owners might be splurging less on their furry companions and what that means for poor Fido. And are you ready for a new donut? Yes. <laughs> well, here you go. We're going to tell you about three new Krispy Kreme flavors. Big development overnight north of the border. Canadian police say the second man wanted for that big stabbing spree is now dead. What motivated those two brothers to kill 10 people could remain a mystery forever. The Bad Bunny concert has been over for hours, but how his show is helping small local businesses coming up on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. Hope you enjoyed that rain yesterday. Right now, we are starting your day at 74 degrees. Good morning, Thursday, the 8th of September. That's right, we made it to Thursday. And for some of us, it got here pretty quick. You know, those who are off on Monday, so that's good news. <laughs> also, a lot of people got a lot of rain yesterday. It was a stormy afternoon for a lot of folks. Mike goes trade repeat performance. Maybe mm, a couple of them today. I don't think it's going to be an actual repeat of yesterday. Fewer a little bit further behind, but at least or between it should say. But at least we do still have a couple of showers out there. So some more folks will see one or two of them later on. We're starting off with uh, just a couple of clouds not really showing up too awfully well in this vantage point. Looking off to the west over there by 410. There's the airport right there. 74 degrees. Two above normal, dew points at 69, which isn't bad. It's not like, uh, you know, you open up the door and just get overwhelmed by the humidity. So, I mean, still kind of summer humidity out there. We do have uh, temperatures in the mid and upper 60s, parts of the hill country right now. 73 Port SA, Uvalde 72, same thing with Hondo and 76 up the road in Canyon Lake. So still fairly warm up around Canyon Lake. Mold moderate, uh, pigweed grass are on the low side. Mold actually came down from the previous day's reading. Obviously you see the updated count is going to be coming out uh, later on this morning. 87 at noon, 95 high temperature. And yep, we do still have, I'm going to call it a 10% chance for one or two of those showers out there. Maybe a thunderstorm later on today. 95, that's three above normal. And it's going to be staying on the hot side with plenty of sunshine all the way through the weekend. We'll take a closer look at those numbers coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, so far so good, Steve? <laughs> yeah, I would say so, Mike. From what we're seeing on TransGuy, there really isn't a lot to show you there. However, these TransGuy cameras aren't showing the problems that uh, we are spotting on our map, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and tell you what the commute looks like right now. 410 at Fredericksburg there at McCullough. You can see it's just getting a little bit busier as we inch closer and closer to 6 a.m. But right now, I would still say it's a good time to head out, get the day's started, grab that breakfast taco or go grab that cup of coffee. But right now, as I mentioned, roads are looking quiet. However, we are seeing an issue right there along I-10 eastbound at Wurzbach Road. Techstop reported this crash just after 515 this morning. You can see that it's in the eastbound lanes of I-10. So if you are traveling down I-10 and you are trying to head to the downtown area through this route, watch out for those flashing lights. But it doesn't appear that it's causing any issues right now. We'll look to it. We'll talk to our friends at TransGuide and get them on the phone, find out exactly if we can get a view of the condition out there, but as we give you a wide look at the map, thankfully not a lot else to show you out there, just some quiet roadways. And if your destination is the Alamo City, let's check out those travel times because right now things still look pretty good. It's a pleasant drive from Pleasanton on I-37 northbound. If you're heading into the downtown area with 28 minutes at this point, 30 minutes on Highway 90 eastbound heading in from Castorville and that arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So don't rush out the door just yet as we get one last look at the roadways 281 at Hildebrand looks like it's getting busier out there, but we're going to watch these roads closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. International Latino artist Bad Bunny has left the Alamo Dome and he performed for one of the largest crowds the city has seen in years. Many fans traveled to San Antonio to catch a glimpse of the Puerto Rican superstar. Camelia Juarez joins us now to tell us about all the business this show is bringing to the Alamo City. 
Now, Mark, Stephanie, the Alamo Dome is empty, but yes, at 5 in the morning, we're still seeing fans leaving the area in their Bad Bunny gear. Now, this show was one of the biggest shows that the city's seen in years. As, as fans lined up to hear his latest album, Un Verano Sin Ti, a crowd nearing about 65,000 people, all traveling from around Texas and around the world. This kind of crowd is comparable to the Alamo Bowl and those who attended the concert, but these people who attended the concert are likely to stay and visit the city after the show. In fact, that's what Bad Bunny did himself. There have been reports of him stopping by a local clubs after the show. Now, coming up next on GMSA, we'll talk about how Bad Bunny's show compares to other shows at the Alamo Dome and what this means for f future shows here at the Alamo Dome. Mark, Stephanie. 535 right now. We may never know why 10 people were fatally stabbed and 18 others were injured in Canada. Police say they arrested a second suspect yesterday, but he died in custody. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, that's after they found his brother's body on Monday. We may never have an understanding of that motivation. The second suspect in a Canadian stabbing spree is dead. Police say a tip led to the arrest of Miles Sanderson here in Saskatchewan yesterday afternoon. They say he was alone in a stolen white truck with a knife. Shortly after his arrest, he went into medical distress. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. Police did not reveal a cause of death, but said they provided medical care on the scene. Officials say he and his brother Damien Sanderson were suspected of killing these 10 people Sunday and injuring 18 others. Most of the victims are from the indigenous community of the James Smith Cree Nation. We're hurting. We're broken, but we're not defeated. This man says his sister, Bonnie Burns, died while trying to protect others. One of her sons was killed in the same attack. Her 13-year-old son was stabbed in the neck but survived. She's not a victim. She's a hero. Police found Damien Sanderson's body Monday and say his wounds did not seem self-inflicted. With both suspects dead, officials say no threat to the public remains. I hope that this brings them some sense of closure in that they can rest easy tonight knowing that Miles Sanderson is no longer a threat to them. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Pentagon says it's putting a pause on deliveries of a popular fighter jet. Defense Department officials discovered that Lockheed Martin's F-35 stealth-capable aircraft has a part made in China. That is against regulations, but the Pentagon says the component does not pose any national security issues. The part in question is an alloy used in the jet's integrated power package and will be replaced by one from an approved vendor. The F-35 is widely used by the U.S. military with versions made for the Air Force, Marines, and the Navy for aircraft carriers. Pentagon officials say the issue will be resolved as quickly as possible so those aircraft deliveries can resume. And more potential relief for drivers at the pump as oil prices continue to tumble. U.S. oil traded at $82.41 a barrel on Wednesday. That is the lowest price since January. This comes after OPEC and its allies cut production to support prices. And let's say concerns about the world economy could also be a factor in Wednesday's drop. The sell-off should continue to lower prices at the pump, and according to AAA, the average cost for a gallon of regular gas is $3.76. That is 31 cents less than a month ago. U.S. military looking for a faster way to shuttle cargo around the world, and that's where Elon Musk's SpaceX, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin come in. The companies, along with Rocket Lab, Sierra Space Corp, and Virgin Orbit have signed deals with the military to launch cargo into rockets. The military is hoping to find a way to get weapons, supplies, and even people from one country to another in a matter of minutes. The U.S. has invested about five to ten billion dollars in a program called Rocket Cargo. The idea of hypersonic travel has been around for years, but point-to-point -point trips at breakneck speeds are still a considered a distant goal. And time now, 538 and 74 degrees for now. One of the biggest movie theater chains in the world is filing for bankruptcy. We'll tell you which theaters in San Antonio are affected. And sorry pets, pet owners might be splurging less on their furry companions. What that means for Wall Street, retail stores, and pet shelters. Outside with live cam. Kind of similar to yesterday morning and with the showers and storms we had around yesterday that's left behind plenty of humidity. Just factor that into your Thursday. We'll talk to Mike coming up.
541 is getting more and more expensive to own and care for pets. New data suggests inflation and the slowing economy are making a huge impact on pet owners' wallets. And as Jen Sullivan reports, why both retailers and Wall Street are concerned about a shift in pet spending. Spoiled pets feeling the inflation pinch. New data indicating pet owners might be splurging less on their furry companions. Wall Street, retail stores, and pet shelters all showing possible signs that the slowing economy is impacting spending habits for dog and cat owners. Prices have skyrocketed. People can't even pay for their own groceries, so let alone care for their, their pets. Shares of online retailer Chewy are down more than 35 percent this year. The drop leading some investors to wonder whether surging inflation could impact sales and earnings. Meanwhile, retail giants Walmart and Target reporting consumers are now spending mostly on essentials. This trend could extend to pet owners who may focus more on things like food and less on discretionary items like toys. There's uh, inflation and the cost to care for animals. There's a fear about supply chain. According to the National Retail Federation, the pandemic gave pet supply retailers a boost as many pet owners were stuck at home and spent more money on their four-legged family members. But now there's growing evidence the pandemic era of splurging on pets could be over. Pet shelters like this one in Georgia are reporting a growing number of pet surrenders. Thank you. But also a surge in owners needing help with basics for their pets, like food and veterinary care. Pausalina has a pet food bank um, where you know anyone from the community can come to get free pet food for their dog or cat. <laughs> for today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. And time now, 5.43 and 74 degrees for now. And it's time to take a look at ADL Animal Defense League coming up next with a dog that needs a new home. Well, Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League, and who is this girl? Hello, sweetie. This sweet girl is Monarch. She's six years old, and she came to us from other local municipal shelter mm -hmm. pregnant with oh. her babies. Okay, so you're a little mama, but you're not going to have any more litters of, of pups because you have been spayed, right? Yes. Yes, you have. So got some shepherd in her. You can see by that that snout. And it was so funny when we were uh, kind of getting ready. She's over in the other corner of the studio, and she was just had her mouth open. It looks like she had this big smile on her face. Yes. She was ready to make her big debut. But, yes, honestly, she came in, and one of her litter uh, pups are is still available for adoption. So mm -hmm. if you are interested in a puppy, and um, you can come and check her out. Her name is and, Princess. And she'll be a good uh, jogging and walking partner. Yes, Gesundheit. Um, and the nice thing about getting a dog this size and an older dog, you know exactly what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Personality, housebroken, everything else. And she's just an easygoing girl. Short coat, easy to take care of. So. Absolutely. What y'all got going on? Uh, awesome. So actually we are in need of a foster. A lot of the times they come in uh, pregnant or with their puppies. So we do need help with their mom, the mamas okay. and the puppies. And we're actually short on puppy formula. So we need support there. And Amazon wish list. Best Absolutely. way to get it, right? Absolutely. On our website, on our Amazon wish list. A couple of clicks goes right to them. So if you'd like more information on fostering, adopting, or what they need, head on over to Animal Defense League, 11th grade in Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, or the Pet Smart. Give them a call, 655-1481. Thank you, dear. And in your morning consumer headlines, the world's second largest movie theater chain has filed for bankruptcy. Cineworld says it is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Now the British company owns Regal Cinemas and has more than 500 movie theaters across the U.S., including several here in San Antonio. The theater chain has struggled since the pandemic forced it to close locations, losing nearly $3 billion in 2020 and another $566 million last year. The company warned late last month that it was reviewing ways to reduce its debt. Despite filing, Cineworld Promises business will continue as usual, noting it has access to nearly $2 billion to finance operations. A new study suggests taking a brisk walk every day could reduce your risk of dementia. Researchers analyzed data from over 78,000 people between the ages of 40 and 79 who wore smart wristbands. They tallied up the steps and found those who took more than 9,800 steps every day were 50% less likely to develop dementia within seven years. Even people who walked 3,800 steps a day saw a drop in their risk of mental decline. This was cut down even further if the person walked more than 40 steps a minute. 
So our producers want you to imagine this. If a donut and a churro had a baby, it would be <laughs> a chur donut. <laughs> Take a look. You can thank Krispy Kreme for this drool-worthy concoction. And you can have three of them to choose from. So cinnamon sugar, cookies and cream, and dulce de leche. They're only at certain Krispy Kreme stores and only for a limited time. Chur Churdos? Yeah. Is that what it's, they're calling it? Yeah. Churdos. Instead of churros, churdos. Churdos. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah. And it says only through the 18th, so get them while they're hot. Yeah. It's it's different. They look kind of fancy, actually. Right? Yeah. If, if you find them in town here, let us know, okay? Yeah. Let us know. And bring us some. Bring us some. Yeah. <laughs> Straight from, from Mike yeah. and Steven. And Steven. Churros. Churros. So right? you'll try Churros. Em. I like that. We can make that a thing. Churros? Yeah. Okay. On, on Fridays, right? Why not today? Oh, even better. Not today. I thought it was going to be something pumpkin spice, guys. I was a little surprised, but yeah. happily surprised. Let's get a look there at the roadways. No surprise there. It's still pretty quiet. 410 at Fredericksburg. Not a lot to show you. It's still relatively an early start to this Thursday morning. But if you are one of those early birds that has to head out in the next few minutes, no need to rush because it is still pretty early out there. And you're not really seeing a lot of traffic building up. You can see at 281 at Jones Mallsberger and there at 410 at the airport. But we did have an issue as we take you to the map. It was there off of I-10 in the eastbound lanes. I did talk to our friends at Transcon on the phone. They did tell us that it was uh, reported as a stall instead of a crash. So that's good news. And hopefully that driver that was experiencing trouble with their vehicle was able to get the assistance from a Texas hero truck. So good news there. And just make sure that you plan ahead. We continue to give you those updates on road closures. And if you've driven through I-10, we've mentioned this before in the east side of Bear County, where barrier work continues to take place, starts on Friday, September 9th, and will wrap on Monday, September 12th, at least a portion of it, according to TxDOT. It's overnight, so make sure you plan ahead of time. 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Full closure of the westbound main lanes from File Road to Loop 1604. But back here on Transguide, nothing really slowing down traffic just yet. Guys. Where's, where's the nearest Krispy Kreme? Huh? Uh, I only know the one on I-10. I-10. Days of Zavala. That's, yep. that's a, quite a trip from here. And there's here. one up by Stone Oak. Yeah. So there's those This two. is all north. Mike, you're going to make the drive? Well, I got to do weather. You got to do traffic. Mark, you're not oh, busy. We've volunt we, we <laughs> volunteered <laughs> Mark for it. All those in favor? Uh, I and give live <laughs> okay, and he can give you live traffic updates. I oh, you know what? Traffic corresponded. Okay, oh, there we Poor go. Mark. No one got to vote nay. So anyway, <laughs> democracy in action. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful sunset yesterday. After the uh, storms moved on through, it was a really, really pleasant evening. Beautiful evening here in town. Picked up some very nice rain in parts of the area. The airport officially only got uh, six hundredths of an inch rain. Anything's better than nothing, obviously. But just, uh, you know, right to the east of there, some folks got uh, more than a half an inch of rain and even more than that on the west side of Bear County. 74 right now, 73 Port SA, 60s in parts of the hill country, a little more pleasant, even 69 in Valverde right now. And the humidity is lower in parts of the hill country as well with these dew points down in the mid 60s. So that's not bad. Of course, this is the the threshold that we like to shoot for below 60. That's when it's really, really comfortable. But I mean, this sure does be I mean, 74 still at Stinson. That's still on the, the humid side, but even Randolph, uh, uh, Port SA and excuse me, it's the airport and uh, New Braunfels, we have those dew points below 70. So that's getting there a little bit better. And as a matter of fact, these numbers are overall down a few degrees, especially in the hill country. Uh, compared to this time yesterday, and that does make a big difference. One, two, three degrees, even five there in New Braunfels is much more comfortable than what it was uh, yesterday. 74, so we'll stay fairly steady throughout the morning hours and then see a lot more sunshine throughout the uh, late morning. And the 12 hour forecast has us up to 87 at noon and then topping off 95 today. So it is going to be a hot one and we'll still have some humidity out there later on this afternoon. So we'll have a heat index to, de to deal with. It's going to feel like the upper 90s. Here's the uh, computer model, a little bit different one than last hour, but um, it still has about the same solution with a couple of these showers trying to pop up even by mid afternoon and those will continue to work their way on through here. This one has them popping up a little bit sooner in the afternoon than that other computer model did, but they both do have a very small chance for a few of these showers also. I want to go into tomorrow then and move on through. We this one, like the other one, does have even a couple of more of these showers trying to pop up in the afternoon tomorrow with that northerly flow. So we will take it. Um, still a little bit questioning 
like it did yesterday with today's rain, questioning whether that will actually come to be because um, it's such a small chance for some rain. But at least, like I said, there is that shot at a couple of showers. So what we still have going on is that high and this low in between them. The northerly flow that picks up these little disturbances, throws them on through here. Not big rainmakers. I mean, we'd love to have this things parked about right there. That'd be perfect, but that's not the situation. This is finally going to start to uh, dissolve as we go on into the weekend. And then that high is going to pretty much take over and still have some lows trying to develop up there around the Great Lakes, which is more of a fallish pattern, trying to throw somewhat of a dry front through here. But no, nah, it's just not going to do all that much. It's just going to remain hot and sunny and basically dry after today. Mm, perhaps one or two of those showers tomorrow. 87 at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 95. Couple of showers here and there later on today. Maybe one or two tomorrow. And then, like I said, 95 all the way through the weekend into next week and plenty of sunshine. A whole lot more after this. One of San Antonio's historic homes will host a festival dedicated to the paranormal. Black Swan Inn will welcome psychics, vendors, and paranormal professionals. We have all the details for this paranormal party right now on KSAT.com. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, if you're suffering from depression at work, you're not alone. We'll tell you some ways you can cope and still get things done while on the clock. High school football season is well underway. Coming up at 6, we'll tell you some of the games you can stream on our BGC app this Friday night. Plus new info on a case involving the death of a highly respected journalist in Las Vegas, Nevada. And checking Trans Guide. A few more cars on the road. There's a live look at 410 at Fredericksburg and 281 at Jones Maltzberger. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotter. We're learning more information on the woman known as the Cancer Bride. Coming up on Jim and Say, we'll tell you what we know about Jessica Vega. And let's look outside with live cam. We are starting at 74 degrees. We had a lot of rain yesterday, hoping for a few showers today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine, people. Good morning. It is Thursday, September the 8th. That's right. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Thursday got here quick and uh, we had a lot of good rain yesterday. A lot of folks were off on Monday, so it has been a uh, very quick week. Mike Jones is now. You get some storms yesterday, Mike Osterhage? Yes. Now, some folks didn't see quite as much. I mean, mm -hmm. in some areas, it was just coming down all at once and the wind and everything. We had a couple of severe storms late last night mm -hmm. just to the east of San Antonio around uh, Guadalupe, Gonzalez, Wilson counties. But then airport, six hundredths of an inch. Better than nothing take anything, but we'll still have a couple of them later on this afternoon. I think fewer and further between than what we had yesterday. Still at 74 here in town. Castroville 75, 76 Canyon Lake, but then 60s out in portions of the hill country and the humidity is it's OK in most spots. Molds on the moderate side. Pigweed grass are low and throughout the rest of the morning. I think we hold fairly steady. We'll have a, a few clouds hanging around here and then later on throughout the rest of the morning. We are going to see a lot more sunshine. That's going to get us up into the upper 80s and we'll top off today. 95 did hit 96 yesterday right before those storms moved on through here and also you're going to feel every bit of that 95 because we'll still have some uh, humidity hanging around here. Again, a couple of showers are possible today, maybe one or two tomorrow. I wouldn't completely discount it, but overall the trend is going to be for temperatures to be on the hot side, mid 90s and plenty of sunshine. So even though the unofficial start of fall is here, it sure is going to feel like summer. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what do you have to report? Well, we are just seeing some quiet roadways out there, Mike. 281 at St. Mary's, uh, not a lot to show you out there this early in the morning. We are seeing some traffic pick up there at US 90, but as always, if you are familiar with that area, you know it's going to be a pretty busy spot. There at 10 at Vance Jackson, it is lo it does look like we're seeing more people out there this early in the morning, but always be on the lookout. We've been talking about those active construction spots, but thankfully, one thing that we haven't talked about are those are any crashes and we take you to the map because we are just seeing some quiet roadways and I'm hoping that we don't jinx ourselves by saying that but uh, we are seeing just some quiet roadways so a perfect time to get out on the roadways and get the day started. Essentially you won't have the roads to yourself but you won't really encounter anything that's going to slow you down and that's the same if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities because the travel time from Seguin still pretty green with 29 minutes on I-10 westbound a little more than half an hour still the usual time from Lavernia on 87 
7 heading northbound to the downtown area and about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floatusville. So I would say take your time this morning. If you're still at home, you still have time to enjoy your cup of coffee and of course enjoy GMSA this early in the morning. But as we get one last look at traffic, 281 at Jones Maltzberger, things are looking fine so far, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Top story this morning. We're learning new information on a woman who tried to kidnap a four year old at a far west side Walmart. We're talking about 35 year old Jessica Vega, who was arrested on Tuesday. We know she's bonded out of jail and is now under house arrest. Jonathan Cota joining us live. Jonathan, I understand we have some new information on Vega. That's right, Mark. We're learning Vega has a number of priors. We're even learning she has made headlines appearing on national television. This is what we know. Vega first making national headlines back in 2012 when she was living in New York. Vega pretending to have had cancer, fooling friends, family, and even her ex-husband. In an interview to 2020, Vega admitting that a friend forged letters from a doctor about her supposed cancer treatments. Now, she pretended to have had leukemia, accepting more than 13 $15,000 in donations that even paid for a wedding and listen to this a honeymoon in Aruba. We were contacted by her former husband after he uh, heard about her arrest to make this connection. We were able to confirm through public records that Jessica Vega is the same woman arrested here in San Antonio who became known as the Cancer Bride. Now, according to an arrest document, Vega attempted kidnapping a four year old girl that was at a Walmart with her mother shopping. This Walmart located off of the 1604 and Petrenko Road at, on the city's far west side. And we're also learning that Vega is charged with attempted kidnapping, a state jail felony. We know she's out on bond and is on full house arrest. That means she is being monitored 24 seven round the clock. We also have are learning that she is set to have a pretrial hearing next month. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotton, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting after they say someone fired several rounds at a bus stop near downtown. This happened yesterday morning on Labor Street, only a few steps away from a playground and a block away from the Tower of Americas. One man was shot and taken to the hospital. Investigators say they believe an argument led up to that shooting. So far, no one has been arrested. And in a separate case, homicide investigators are still trying to learn more about a body found just west of downtown near El Paso Street and South Frio Street. Investigators say the victim's body was found outside an abandoned building. There was so much trauma to that body, they are having trouble identifying the person. Police right now say it's not clear how that person died. In Memphis, Tennessee, police have made an arrest in a deadly shooting spree that took the lives of four and injured three others. 19-year-old Ezekiel Kelly is accused of driving around the city Wednesday night, shooting and streaming the whole thing on Facebook Live. A suspect reportedly seen walking into an auto parts store and opening fire. Police say the violent spree lasted more than two hours. Officers located Kelly in his stolen vehicle. That led to a high-speed chase and his arrest. And you details this morning in an arrest in the murder of a respected journalist in Las Vegas. The suspect is a prominent local official. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is tracking the latest. This morning, police in Las Vegas have arrested a local politician in the murder of a well-known journalist. SWAT teams swarmed the home of Clark County Administrator Robert Tellis late yesterday, where they found him holed up inside. Hours earlier, police had raided his home. Did you do Can this? you tell us anything? Where Tellus was seen walking past reporters wearing a white hazmat suit. Do you have a comment? Investigators not explaining the suit, but they say Tellus is now the top suspect in the stabbing death of Jeff Gehrman, a Las Vegas reporter and vocal critic of the Tellus administration. Gehrman was found dead outside his home Saturday, police saying he had been stabbed multiple times. Everyone, I think, is united in our community from the media to the police to the public to try to solve this crime as quickly as possible. On Tuesday, authorities released this video of a suspect near Gehrman's home, saying it appeared the person may have been casing the area to commit a crime disguised as a member of a known burglary ring. They also showed photos of the suspected killer's vehicle. A similar SUV was towed away from Telus's home yesterday. Police then evacuated the street, escorting neighbors and the media from the area, some climbing down ladders to safety. And then officers moved in to make the arrest. Telus taken into custody and brought to the hospital, suffering from what police describe as self-inflicted stab wounds. A spokesperson from Telus's office refused to comment last night on the arrest. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York.
California has avoided rolling power outages during extreme heat for now. The California Independent System Operator is thanking residents and businesses for heeding another request to reduce electricity consumption during peak evening hours. Western states are struggling through one of the hottest, longest September heat waves on record. Temperatures began soaring last week, and the National Weather Service warned that dangerous heat could continue through tomorrow. And time now, 608 and 74 degrees for now. Still to come, terror in the water. A little boy sharing how he survived a shark attack while snorkeling off the Florida Keys. That is ahead in your GMA First Look. And coming up after the break, a look at some of the stories trending right now on KSAT.com. Outside with live cam, quite a few of you got some storms yesterday, especially here in Bear County. Could we see a few more scattered around today? Mike says there's a chance. We'll talk about it coming up. 612 Edgewood ISD hosting a job fair today looking to fill several positions. Some of those include custodians, bus drivers and child nutrition specialists. The job fair is happening from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Edgewood Performing Arts Theater on Lance Street. If you're interested, you need to apply ahead of time. We have a link to that application on our website at ksat.com. And for all runners and walkers, the inaugural Run to Remember 5K will be held on September 30th at the Mission County Park at 6030 Padre Drive. The run will be held from 5 to 9 p.m. Now, Run to Remember is a fundraising awareness event for the Pink Parades and the I Am Vanessa Guillen Foundation. It costs $30 to register, and the event will end with a vigil and closing ceremony. We're going to have a timeline for the run on our website at KSET.com. A new food truck park is coming to the Calaveras Lake area outside San Antonio. The bar and playground will be added. A bar and playground will be added. It's set to open later this month. It'll expect a grand opening of September 17th. It'll be a family and pet friendly park, live performances on the weekends, and will be open daily. As of now, there will be five trucks with barbecue, Italian, and Tex-Mex on the menu. With the opening date being this month, Halloween and holiday events are also in the works. Check it out online. That's right. Time now, 613. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Guys, I was just telling Mark, I mean, in the last few moments, so when I last talked to you all, we didn't have any issues. And now it looks like those issues are already starting to pack up there. All right, US 90, loop 16 to 4. You see those flashing lights? Multiple first resp responders, that is. And of course, slow moving traffic. Not a good sign. We do have a crash reported there in the westbound lanes of 90. So this is out going toward Castroville as opposed to traveling, traveling into San Antonio. Hopefully, this won't really be a big issue for drivers, but what we are seen is that first responders are still directing traffic out there. So very dark. Make sure you watch out for them. Not clear yet on any injuries, but we'll work to get that information. And as always, we hope everyone is OK, but let's take you to the map. And thankfully, traffic is still looking OK from what we're seeing out there in the westbound lanes of US 90 as you approach Loop 1604. No delays just yet, but an area that we'll watch closely. And as I mentioned, we also have another issue that popped up here on the other side of town over here on the northeast side uh, near I 35 right there there at FM 3009. A crash reported in the northbound lanes. I did talk to our friends at Trans Guide on the phone just a few minutes ago, and we were able to get a shot of the conditions out there. Thankfully, it's not really causing any issues because it does appear to be on the access road, but still watch out because we are seeing a lot more vehicles out on the roadways this early in the morning. We give you a wide look at the map. Really not a lot else to show you. It's just still pretty quiet, I would say, but these two incidents really could start seeing uh, really could impact the commute. So just watch out. We'll work to get that information for you, but it doesn't look like this is really causing a big delay just yet, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. OK, well, at least it's not a big delay. Not yet. What about okay. on the bus route? Shouldn't be uh, too bad as you head off to the uh, bus or as you get ready to go to work. Temperatures are in the mid 70s right now. I actually have some 60s in parts of the hill country, partly cloudy skies and then later on this afternoon 95. So it is going to be a hot one. Keep an umbrella handy. Just keep it in the back seat or, you know, maybe stuffed in a backpack just in case. We will have one or two showers out there. It's not going to be as widespread as yesterday, but if you do get caught in one of these, could have a, a decent downpour here or there. All right, beautiful uh, sunset yesterday, and I got another really pretty picture to show you. That is the moon getting a little closer to being full. Of course, it is full on Saturday. This is going to be the harvest moon. The full moon closest to the autumnal equinox and of course the equinox the official start of fall is coming up on the uh, the 22nd but really neat picture love that should have pretty good moon gazing uh weather the next couple of evenings especially as we go into saturday should have that nice big full moon rising just as the sun is going down all right we've got uh 
No, not a bad look outside right now. A couple of clouds. All right, as far as rain yesterday, it almost looked like, you know, those big storms are brewing even right around noontime, and they pretty much that that real huge storm pretty much traveled almost right down 35 and as far as rainfall estimates on radar inch inch and a half here and there so some decent amounts and a lot of it was as is usually the case very localized so you got a whole bunch of rain here in western bear county and in eastern uh, medina county and right there around medina lake a lot of nice rain castorville got some as well but then you look over toward shirts and garden ridge unfortunately you folks didn't see much of anything and another case in point airport six hundredths of an inch and then about six tenths of an inch six times as or excuse me ten times as much rain just to the east of there uh, along 410 even in and around uh, say Alamo Heights a lot of rain or right down by the Pearl some nice uh, bullseyes for that rain so again not everybody like look at Leon Valley it just there was like a dome on top of it didn't get any rain and uh, today it's going to be like I said few fewer and further between as far as some of these showers 78 at nine o'clock and then we'll have a lot more sunshine later on today get up to 87 at noon and we're going to be topping off at 95 10 percent chance for some rain so 95 is about three degrees above normal we are going to have humidity around here so you will definitely feel that 95 degrees and then a couple of showers which is what computer models are indicating by noon maybe a few of those little uh little spot starting to pop up around here then going into mid afternoon and in toward dinner time most of that's going to be working its way down to the uh, the south and again most of us won't be seeing rain later on today now one thing that's interesting though with uh, some of these computer models yesterday of course it showed the rain that we had and that little bit you know a couple little spots trying to show up for today which is the situation and now they're also showing a couple of more of these uh, little spots of rain around here tomorrow so i don't think we can take it completely off the board as far as any rain chances but it's not going to be a, a great shot if at all so high pressure and then low pressure to the east in between them that's what's keeping these little disturbances coming down here in this northerly flow. And that will remain the case today, somewhat tomorrow. The low, which has not been in a good position to give us any really, really good rain, just sort of dissolves as we go into the weekend. And that high is pretty much going to be taking over. Now, there is a low moving in toward the Great Lakes. Very fallish kind of pattern up to the north. This is also going to try and take a front and push it down in our direction, but it's not going to have any moisture to work with. Um, it's going to be, if it does indeed come through here, it'll not really do much of anything. Get rid of a little bit of humidity, so it will be more comfortable in the afternoons as we go in toward the first part of next week. But still, that high is pretty much going to be in command, and that's going to keep us on the, uh, well, look at that big, that big ridge sitting over the middle part of the country. That's going to keep us pretty hot and pretty dry in through even a good chunk of next week, perhaps way down the road something, but that's speculation right now. 87 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon. 95 high temperature, mostly sunny. One or two of those showers out there and then go into the next seven days. And I say it's summery because usually summer is like cut and paste and cut and paste. And that's what this forecast is. Plenty of sunshine and uh, mid 90s all the way through next week. Thank you, Mike. Approaching 620, 74 degrees. And we're about to head to the gridiron to talk high school football. Just ahead, a preview of some of the top matchups. Ladies, six minutes, please. <laughs> this is my life. It's not always picture perfect. Plus, I'm dealing with bleeding from uterine fibroids. Enter my Fembry, a once daily pill for women with heavy menstrual bleeding due to uterine fibroids. With my Fembry, heavy bleeding went down by 84%. Serious risks include heart attack, stroke, and blood clots. Don't take my Fembry if you've had any of these or have uncontrolled high blood pressure, are over 35 in smoke, could be pregnant, or have or had osteoporosis, liver disease, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, certain cancers, or an allergic reaction to it. Don't use longer than two years as bone loss may occur. Pregnancy loss can occur and changes in periods may make it hard to know if you're pregnant. If you think you are, stop taking it right away. Other risks are depression, suicidal thoughts or actions, abnormal liver tests, high blood pressure, and passing of the Fibroid. Less bleeding, same life. I'll take it. Ask your doctor about my Fembry. My life, my Fembry. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, 
surviving a shark attack. He was just screaming and um, waving his arms and I needed to just, I didn't see anything in the water. I just saw him there screaming at me to get to him. 11 year old Jameson Reeder Jr. was snorkeling with a pool noodle when the unimaginable happened. He was viciously attacked by a bull shark in the Florida Keys. Part of his leg amputated. It's just, you know, a reminder of how short life is and how fragile life is. And this morning, his family telling their story exclusively to GMA. I'm happy to be alive and that nine foot bull shark should have have taken me down. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on this harrowing survival story. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News. With two weeks already in the books, the high school football season kicks into high gear with the beginning of district play. KSA 12 Sports' Andrew Seeley has a preview of the three best games you can stream on the BGC app tomorrow night for week three. Potential district title hangs in the balance this Friday night at the Gus as Harlan takes on Brennan in a 29-6A showdown. We were real focused for this week because it's a big week, district championship kind of week. So, you know, we're getting ready. We're down the street. We know some kids. Like, we grew up with kids that play with Harlan. So, obviously, there's going to be uh, that rivalry. The Bears and Hawks have only met two times before, and Brennan has won both matchups by an average of 26 points. This year, Harlan says things have changed. I feel like we're ready at this point. We kind of need a challenge now, so I feel like Brennan starting off is going to be really good for us. Now Harlan's a good team. We're a good team. We've been practicing really hard, and I feel like that we're going to go out there and win. Bulldogs got room to run. One guy to beat. Good block on the outside. Going to take it all the way back. Untouched. Meanwhile, Somerset is riding high off a 23-14 victory over Southside in the Battle of 1604. <laughs> This week, the 2-0 Bulldogs host 2-0 Floresville in a great 4A matchup. Both teams have shown they can blow opponents out or win low-scoring affairs. <laughs> Last but not least, Bernie puts their undefeated record on the line against Antonian. The Greyhounds have already scored 76 points this season in a pair of wins, while the Apaches enter Friday's meeting with victories over Blanco and Pleasanton. Bernie won the most recent meeting between these two teams, 28 to 22. But that was all the way back in 2019, so we'll see who comes out on top this year. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Time now, 626 and 74 degrees for now. New details just into our newsroom on the Memphis shooting spree last night. Ahead in our next half hour, what investigators are now revealing about what happened. And let's look outside with TransGuide. Still that problem over there at Highway 90 at Loop 1604. We're going to get an update with Stephen Cavazos very soon. blew the roof off of the Alamo Dome last night, drawing a crowd of nearly 65,000 people. Coming up on GMSA, what this means for the Alamo Dome going forward. Outside with live cam, a ton of humidity in place after those storms we had around Wednesday. Just a hint of a sunrise out there on the eastern horizon. Welcome back and good morning to you. It's Thursday, the 8th of September. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. I know a lot of us got rain yesterday, and for me, it was when I was picking up my daughter, which was kind of funny because I was prepared. I had my umbrella, my right. rain boots, and right. then I had hers in my hand, but when I got there, it stopped, and she looked at me like, what are you doing? Yeah, what, did, what did you bring these for? <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to wear that. And, and here in town, it did hit at kind of a interesting time right when it was pickup mm -hmm. like that, and boy, if you didn't, you know, you didn't have like rain boots on. There was no getting around this because in some places it was just flowing across the streets. We're starting to see, as Mark mentioned, that little glow. Camera's a bit out of focus. Sorry about that, but that glow of the uh, early morning sunrise. And not everybody saw rain um, just to the east of the airport looking off in this direction. About six tenths of an inch estimated on radar. Go about a half mile this way over toward the airport and picked up six hundredths of an inch of rain. And then on the northwest side of town, didn't get nothing and some folks picked up almost an inch and a half, two inches. So it was really uh, dependent on obviously where you were. 74 right now. Dew point has actually dropped down a degree now at 78, which, or excuse me, 68, which is a little more comfortable. Not bad out there. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what the uh, 
allergen count is as we go in toward the next hour or so when that comes out with some of this moisture hanging around here. 74 in town, 71 Hondo, 60s in parts of the hill country. Right now, mold is on the moderate side. It did go down from the previous day's reading. Pigweed and grass are both low. So nice, some clouds out there this morning, and then we'll have mostly sunny skies. It is going to be hot. We'll be in the mid 90s and a couple more showers are possible today. Not very likely a 10% chance. So just sort of a fewer and further between than what we had around here yesterday. Mostly sunny and hot tomorrow going into the weekend. A stray shower still is possible or so you can't completely rule it out tomorrow, but overall just sunny and hot and that's going to be the situation not only the weekend, but also going in toward next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority got some lights going on mm -hmm. out there. Better news though, Mike, within the last minute or so we saw those lights, those flashing lights, I should say uh, clear from the scene. This was actually a crash that was reported there off US 90 at loop 1604. Check it out right now because traffic is actually moving through there a lot more smoothly and in fact, we did see a tow truck out there and it may seem like we have a uh, uh, that's still on the scene, but everything else looks like it's moving just fine. So I would still advise you it's dark. Watch out uh, for those people that are still out there working to clear things up, but it doesn't look like this crash was causing any more issues. It was reported here off U Loop 1604 uh, US 90. I should say, pardon me, in the westbound lanes as you approach Loop 1604. So this is going out toward Castroville. However, where we're really seeing a little bit of a slowdown is here in the eastbound lanes, but that's also normal because people are still waking up and getting out from Castroville to the Alamo City. So just watch Watch out in that direction, but also better news report up on as we take a big leap over here to I-35 in the northbound lanes at FM 3009. A crash was also reported there, but this one was actually on the Axis Road and really wasn't causing a lot of issues for drivers, but uh, we did see a little bit of a slowdown building out there. Thankfully, that is also cleared. But now let's go ahead and give you that view of the metro area. You can see not a whole lot else to talk about, but we do see a few stalls out there. So as always, make sure you check your vehicles before you get out on the road ways and if you see a stalled vehicle off on the shoulder lane, make sure to move over or slow down. Let's go ahead and take it back here to Transguide. You can see things are looking a lot better there, but of course still a little bit of a slowdown that we're seeing uh, with traffic uh, out there at US 90 at Loop 1604. We'll watch the area closely and hopefully have a better update on the traffic out there in the next few minutes. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Now to Uvalde, where those affected by the shooting at the now closed Robb Elementary will soon be able to apply for financial assistance. This is being made possible through the National Compassion Fund. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And good morning, Jonathan. How soon will families be able to apply for funding? Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. And as soon as next week, that's according to the National Compassion Fund that has announced its plans to start distributing donations to Uvalde families. Now, the funds were collected uh, through the Uvalde Together We Rise Fund and the National Compassion Fund that will be providing over $16 million in donations. Now, applications for financial assistance will open on Tuesday, September 13th. Now, the money will go to victims in one of five categories. That is legal errors of the 21 victims, people hurt in the shooting, those who were in nearby classrooms and experiencing psychological trauma, the class on the playground, some employees at the nearby funeral home, and those present at Bob Elementary when the shooting began. Now, donations to the Uvalde Together We Rise Fund are still being accepted, and if you'd like to read more on eligibility guidelines, you can do so by visiting our website, kset.com. Reporting live from downtown, Jonathan Cota, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jonathan. And Latino international superstar Bad Bunny wrapped up his show last night at the Alamo Dome. And even though the concert is over, the economic impact is still being felt here at home. Camelia Juarez joins us now with what this show means for the future of the Alamo Dome. Stephanie Mark, last night, Bad Bunny drew in nearly 65,000 people. That includes folks from all around Texas and all around the world. Now, many of those undoubtedly staying at hotels and eating at area restaurants. According to officials at the Alamo Dome, the crowd last night was a similar size as the December Alamo Bowl. That generated an economic impact estimated at 45 million. And guests at the recent Motley Crue show spent nearly $50 each person at, at concession stands. Now, the Alamo Dome can usually hold around 72,000 people. Now, keep in mind, 
The Alamo Dome was nearly full last night and officials with the Alamo Dome say that they will continue to upgrade the facility as this, you know, for better, bigger concerts. They're planning to add sweet seats so they can accommodate future fans. Live at the Alamo Dome, Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Topping your morning headlines, police say they have arrested a 19-year-old man who went on a shooting rampage across Memphis, Tennessee. Four people were killed and three others were hurt. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest. This morning, a suspect in custody after a deadly shooting spree in Memphis, Tennessee. 19-year-old Ezekiel Kelly is accused of driving around the city, shooting and killing four people, wounding three others, all while streaming the violence on Facebook Live. In a Facebook video that's now been removed, the suspect was reportedly seen walking into an auto parts store and opening fire. Our citizens in Memphis and Shelby County were going about their business, ordinary citizens doing ordinary things, getting off from work, picking up children from daycare, just going about their ordinary lives when it was all of a sudden shattered. Many families were shattered tonight. Police saying the spree lasted more than two hours, spanning eight different crime scenes. Police say Kelly later stole a car at gunpoint, officers eventually locating the vehicle, leading to a high-speed pursuit where Kelly was eventually arrested. But the massive manhunt paralyzing Memphis into the evening. Residents urged to stay home, bus service was suspended, and a minor league baseball game placed on lockdown. The city in shock. This is no way for us to live. And it is not acceptable. The people of our city were confronted with the type of violence no one should have to face. Police say this all began around 1 a.m. Wednesday, where Kelly is accused of shooting and killing a man in the driveway of a home. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And one of former President Trump's longtime allies is expected to turn himself in to authorities today. Steve Bannon acknowledged in a statement on Tuesday that he would be charged soon. The New York State charges are based on the same conduct Bannon was charged for by federal prosecutors in 2020. In another case, Bannon was convicted in July on contempt charges for defying a congressional subpoena from the House Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. He is scheduled to be sentenced in October. Eligible Texans can cast their ballots for state leaders and district-based district -based representatives this year. The governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general are some of the reps up for re-election. So important things to know, October 11th is the last day to register to vote and submit an address change for the midterms. You can check to see if you're registered to vote through the Texas Secretary of State's website. And with extreme weather events happening in Texas, some doctors say these events can be devastating to your mental health. Now, there are resources for mental health support available. Doctors say it is important to control what you can when you are in situations of natural disasters. Now, they say to monitor and address day-to-day -day symptoms of stress or anxiety. You can also prepare by stocking up on non-perishable food, water, and first aid supplies. We have more ways to stay on top of your mental health before or after extreme weather events and you can take a look right now on KSET.com. 639, 73 degrees. And coming up later on Good Morning America, the big Dancing with the Stars announcement that you've been waiting for. You're not going to want to miss who's joining the new season. So look for the big reveal beginning at 7. Plus depression rates skyrocketing here in the U.S. After the break, how depression can impact your work and what you can do about it. And welcome back at 643. Workers diagnosed with depression miss an additional 68 million work days a year compared to workers without depression. That's costing U.S. employers an estimated $23 billion in lost productivity. That's because depression doesn't only prevent someone from showing up at work, but it can also affect their performance. Max Massey has some ways you can cope with depression at work. Motivation, creativity, attitude, focus. Depression can not only impact a person's personal life, but their work as well. People have this reduced sense of personal accomplishment, which then negatively translates into um, how they do. Not only can depression impact their mental well-being, it also interferes with their ability to complete physical job tasks about 20% of the time. So what can someone do to cope with their depression at work? 
that venting to other people can be quite helpful. Communicating with other people and giving people an opportunity to help you and support you uh, is very powerful. Also, try dividing the day into small tasks so that you feel you're achieving things as you go. Take a break to grab a coffee or go on a walk. According to the Mayo Clinic, doing 30 minutes or more of exercise a day, three to five days a week, may significantly improve depression symptoms. Part-time workers suffer from depression more and they miss almost five more days of work per year than their colleagues who do not have depression. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 644. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos about the situation at Highway 90. So it's funny, we were talking about this, Mark. Uh, the situation has actually cleared out, and what we're seeing is a pretty big slowdown. But believe it or not, this is pretty normal. If you travel through US 90, we really start to see a lot more people waking up, getting out on the roadways, trying to make their way to the Alamo City from Castroville. So that slowdown is always expected out there. So if you have a crash anytime on a busy spot like that near 90, you're going to see a big delay. But thankfully, this is pretty normal. We take you to the map. That crash was picked up there in the west bound lanes of US 90, but check that out. It's pretty green as compared to those eastbound lanes. Again, that is because traffic is moving to the Alamo City, so just watch out there. Expect the slowdown. We did have a crash over off 35 in the northbound lanes over here on the northeast side of San Antonio. That is cleared out already, but I did notice there is a little bit of a slowdown already developing out there as well. Again, 35, a busy corridor, so we can expect to see traffic moving through, through there uh, in the next few minutes and start to pick up. But as you see there on the map, we will see the normal slowdowns off the the northwest side 1604 as well as 90 and 35. Watch out. Expect some minor slowdowns, but I'd say pack that patience with your cup of coffee this morning. Back here on Trans Guide, though, here in town, things look to be moving just fine by the airport, guys. Thank you, Stephen. GMSA lead photographer Taylor McClellan <laughs> is at it again. Yes. Yeah. No kid. <laughs> wow. Is this, is this Woodlawn Lake again? Yep. Yes, wow. It is. And the, interesting, the storms moved on through and skies really cleared out beautifully yesterday, but look at the reflection nice. there and how just like glass that Woodlawn Lake is. Beautiful, beautiful picture. Thank you very much. And obviously the sun uh, shining off those clouds. Speaking of sun, good looking sunrise this morning. A few clouds hanging around out here, but otherwise great looking shot. Yesterday we did hit 96 degrees before those storms moved on through. That was uh, right around early afternoon and there was a lot of humidity. You could definitely feel it. Uh, 96 Catula as well as New Braunfels today. About the same situation. I'm going for 95 here in town. That's going to be the situation throughout much of the uh, metropolitan area. Maybe some uh, low 90s around here, but we'll still have enough humidity to make you notice that 95 degrees. It'll feel like the upper 90s. We're going to make it up through the upper 70s later on this morning. Lots of sunshine and then mid to upper 80s as we go in toward late morning at noon, 87 degrees. We'll top off at 95, like I said, later on today, there's that 10% chance for one or two of those showers to pop up around here, which a couple of the, the short range, short term co computer models have kind of agreed on by the early afternoon, one or two showers trying to pop up. We still have this northerly flow in the atmosphere like we had yesterday. So you get these little disturbances and uh, maybe even a couple of heavier downpours. And there could be if you get a thunderstorm to pop up, could have a decent downpour. Yesterday, um, some areas picked up half an inch, inch of rain very, very quickly. Other spots didn't pick up anything. Case in point, airport, six hundredths of an inch of rain. Go down the street a few blocks and picked up uh, about ten times that much, six tenths of an inch of rain. Uh, that's going to be the situation, like I said, today. Then tomorrow, even a couple of a uh, couple of more showers are possible or put it this way, can't completely rule it out. Um, it's a similar situation to what the, the computer models look like as far as today is concerned. So yeah, there may be one or two of them around here tomorrow. That'll be about it. Another uh, haven't uh, been keeping track of the tropics. Of course, we didn't have anything in the month of August and now there are two systems out here. They've kind of switched roles, if you will. Danielle is now just a tropical storm, and this is Earl. It has become a hurricane. It's going to be affecting Bermuda, and may, it's looking like it's going to become a major hurricane of Category 3. And then this cluster of clouds out there in the middle of the Atlantic, the Hurricane Center is looking at that one as developing into a tropical system within the next 48 hours. It's 87 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. By the way, nothing in the tropics right now is going to be having any effect on us. 95, mostly sunny, a couple of showers out there, maybe a thunderstorm. Can't completely rule one out tomorrow afternoon. And then overall, though, just to kind of sum things up, hot and sunny. 
a lot of sunshine and like I said, kind of a summery type pattern as far as every single day, same thing, same thing. So Well, we can't pretend it's not early September still. That's true in yeah. San Antonio. <laughs> Usually you think, oh, September, sweaters. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> not yet. That. Not yet. Okay, wishful thinking for now. <laughs> 649, 73 degrees. And if you have just one or two extra hours a week, how would you spend it? Tomorrow on GMSA, the return to volunteerism and how you can find your best fit. Opening live cam back up and soak in this beautiful sunrise. It's good to have you with us on GMSA. We'll talk to Stephen one more time coming up after the break. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The woman accused of attempting to kidnap a four-year-old girl at a Walmart is now out on bond and we are learning new information. Vega first made national headlines back in 2012 when she was living in New York. Vega pretending to have had cancer, fooling friends, family and even her ex-husband, accepting more than $13,000 in donations that even paid for a wedding and a honeymoon in Aruba. According to an arrest document, Vega attempted kidnapping a four-year-old girl at a Walmart on 1604 and Petrenko Road. Now Vega is charged with attempted kidnapping, which is a state jail felony. We know she's out on bond and on full house arrest, which means she's being monitored 24 seven. She has a pre-trial hearing set for next month. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We may never have an understanding of that motivation. The second suspect in a Canadian stabbing spree is dead. Police say a tip led to the arrest of Miles Sanderson here in Saskatchewan yesterday afternoon. They say he was alone in a stolen white truck with a knife. Shortly after his arrest, he went into medical distress. He was pronounced deceased at the hospital. Police did not reveal a cause of death, but said they provided medical care on the scene. Officials say he and his brother Damien Sanderson were suspected of killing these 10 people Sunday and injuring 18 others. Most of the victims are from the indigenous community of the James Smith Cree Nation. We're hurt. We're broken, but we're not defeated. This man says his sister, Bonnie Burns, died while trying to protect others. One of her sons was killed in the same attack. Her 13-year-old son was stabbed in the neck but survived. She's not a victim. She's a hero. Police found Damien Sanderson's body Monday and say his wounds did not seem self-inflicted. With both suspects dead, officials say no threat to the public remains. I hope that this brings them some sense of closure in that they can rest easy tonight knowing that Miles Sanderson is no longer a threat to them. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Let's get one last look at your morning commute there. 281 Jones Maltzberger. Things look fine. Still a little busy out there. Just remember to drive safe there at the airport. You can see traffic is already picking up. So uh, prepare for a little bit of slowdowns. That's really what the headline would be at this point. So we are seeing it right there on our map. Same spot. US 9035 over there off Loop 1604 on the northwest side. We will see that take place at this point now that we are in morning rush. But I always advise you try not to rush out the door. Take your time this morning. There's 35. It's definitely picking up. Mike. Thanks, sir. And uh, good looking sunrise this morning. It's going to be coming over the horizon in just about 15 minutes or so. 15, 20 minutes. A couple of clouds out there. Temperatures right now. We are still at 74, 69 Ball Verde, mid 60s Hill Country. Humidity's OK. 87 at noon, 95 high temperatures. Going to be hot one, one or two showers out there. Fewer and further between than yesterday. Perhaps one tomorrow, but overall hot and sunny through the weekend into next week. And can you guys believe fall begins on Thursday, September 22nd? Yeah, Officially. I'm not ready for Officially. it. Officially. Officially. It'll probably still be a little warm. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for joining us today. Have a great day. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.